Good morning, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> we talked enough about um, some of our demonology topics. Yesterday we dealt with God's eight rebukes or nine rebukes to the third eye movement. And then we followed it up last night with demonic infiltrations. And we talked about how Satan infiltrates the church through false brethren, false apostles, false prophets, false teachers, hirelings, um, through different systems. He has a communion table. The Bible says not to drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons or eat at the table of the Lord and the table of demons. We talked about how they move and how they function and how they have to penetrate to infiltrate so they can dominate. So today we're going to give you guys some spiritual keys for authority because your power, you can have a power shortage when you don't understand authority. So I want you to come on in. Um, when you teach, you should have authority. When you preach, you should have authority. When you pray, you should have authority. When you have, um, it's really, really, really all about tapping into the anointing so that you can be, do, say, and become all that God has for you. Amen. I want you guys to come on in. Give me one second here. I'm going to do some work just for one second. Please make sure that you're all sharing. Amen. I want you guys to all come on in. Please make sure you're all sharing. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to help with your spiritual authority. How many people feel like they need authority today? Make sure you are sharing. Make sure you are interacting. Amen. So that you can receive. You already know how we do it. So you want to tag at least four people. You want to share. Amen. You can share this to your story as well if you would like. You can share this to some of the groups that you're in. And you can tag people that you believe will not be offended, but will be happy that you have decided to bring them into the party of to the party of learning how to grow their authority. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Here we go. Here we go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 All right. So uh, you tag people by commenting, put in their name in the comments. You can tag people by putting their names in the comments. Someone just asked me how to tag. All right. All right. Amen. God bless. God bless. We're going to deal with uh, spiritual authority. Amen. Amen. We're going to deal with spiritual authority. Amen. On today. So uh, I'm going to take you guys to the story of the centurion. And we're going to deal with a man who had great faith. Okay. So there were people who had faith and then there were people who had great faith. Faith has several levels. Okay. So there is no faith, little faith, no, no faith, faith, little faith, great faith, and then the faith of God, the gift of faith, and then the faith of God, right? So there are levels of faith. Okay. And in these different levels of faith, you can say, well, I believe, but then there may be a depth to how you believe. There may be a dimension to, way, to the way you believe. There is, There are areas of belief, okay? Um, there are areas of conviction. And so I want to deal with today, I want to deal with today, um, the power, you know, I want to deal with today the power of Hold on one second.
Amen. 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 All right. Praise the Lord. Please forgive me for that. I just had the, the bug guy come out. He's spraying. So I had to take care of some business there. Amen. Are you guys good? Okay. All right. As we are all growing here, I want you guys to understand that um, there are different levels of faith. And in this particular situation, we're going to go here. I'm going to break open the bread of the word of God with you this morning. We're going to go to Matthew chapter eight. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 8, and we're going to scroll down to uh, verse 5. And we're going to have a conversation about the centurion, okay? Um, and the reason why we want to talk about the centurion is because he says some key things here, okay? So power um, should work with authority, okay? So which is they have power to... Um, that is absent the authority of God. Demons, they have power that is absent the authority of God. Satan is moving in a power. Some of it is in conjunction with, right, the authority of God because God allows him to do some things. But majority of what he's doing is against the authority of what God really wants, okay? But there are some times like with Job and other things that he is actually conducting his service or his assassination or whatever it is he's doing. The, the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy under the authority of what God is doing. An evil spirit came up before the Lord and said, I will help. I will help. And God said, how will you help? And he said, I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of your prophets. So the spirit asks for permission. Authority is about permission. Put that in the chat room. Authority is about permission. Now we all have power. We all have the Holy Spirit. We should be moving in great levels of power. We should be moving in great levels of anointing. I hope you guys are all sharing. And when you are, when you are a believer, you have access to eternal power. You have access to eternal authority. And we're going to deal with that today. So sometimes when you pray and, and your prayer isn't working, it may be an a, a, a authority shortage. Okay. And even today, the attack on spiritual leadership, the attack on covering, the attack on all of these different systems that help to authenticate a healthy environment for authority, uh, they're now being attacked because Jesus said in the last days that many will be lawless. Many will be lawless. The state of America, the state of the world, everything that's going on with Israel is all the, con the conducting of an environment for the lawless one. Remember, in order for the Antichrist to be received, he has to be received in the environment and the culture um, that is necessary, that's going to benefit him getting in a position, him doing what he wants to do, him looking like he's the best person. I've always said this, Satan will create the biggest problems for you only to come and be your solution. I'm going to say this one more time. Satan has actually been the one to create your problems. He created a problem for Eve in the garden and then proposed to her or proposed to her a solution. OK, remember, his number one tool is suggestion. And if you guys don't understand that, you're going to be persuaded to do things that are going to attack your authority. And when your authority is low, you have a power shortage. You're carrying power, but the plug is not in the wall. You're carrying power, but something, the piece of furniture is smashing the cord. Did you catch it? It's breaking the cord apart on the inside. And so I want to help you today to reconnect to the authenticity of the power that is resting in your life through the Holy Spirit. Now, now we're going to have a wonderful time because I love talking about authority and I understand how to release great measures of power, you know, raise the dead, blind have seen, ears have opened. People have never heard their voice before. They had the little monitor machine, the machine on their ear so they can hear. They plugged it into like a socket in their brain area right there so they can hear because the ear didn't develop, have heard their name, have heard their voice, Without that, without that monitor piece for the first time. And so God has, has used us, even stage four cancer, many things. God has used us, even paralyzed arms, raising up, stretching up, and praising God. We've seen so many things, guys. And it's because when authority is right, then power flows correctly, okay? When your authority is wrong, you will always have a power shortage, okay? And when I mean by power shortage, the word shortage doesn't mean a power that doesn't consistently work. 
the word shortage also means what it means. It means short. You're limited in power. If you want more access to power, you have to have more access to authority. So please read this scripture with me. We're going to tap into this a little bit, and then I'm going to show you how to increase your authority. How many people are excited to be here this morning. We're really going to break open this topic. We're going to go into the next dimension. Promise you, you're going to lay hands this week and they're going to recover. You're going to pray the prayer of faith and you're going to receive answers. Things are going to begin to happen for you once you tap into the your born again inheritance of authority. This is your hour to execute. Put it in a chat room. This is my hour to execute. No more st- uh, being a, a a bystander, no more. You're going to get into the game. You're going to be a participator. You're going to you're going to help to build the kingdom of God through the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to say a couple of things. Authority is borrowed. Authority is borrowed. And this is the biggest problem that we've had in the body of Christ. Many of you want your own authority. Well, guess what? Your authority has limits, but his authority has no limits. The Bible very, it tells us throughout the scripture that we share, we sit on his throne with him. We're co-heirs with him. We're, we, we're, we're, we're sharing everything with him, the blessing and all these things with him. And then the one thing that we should be sharing with him, we don't want to share. We want our own authority. No, shut up. You need to sit down and be like Mary and learn to share authority. If you share his authority, Authority, then you'll have the same impact of his authority. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? Th- this generation that is so thirsty for acceptance, so thirsty uh, to belong, has abdicated their rights to share with Jesus, okay, to share what he has. And when you share it, you don't change it. You take it for what it is and you use it to the extent of what it can be used so that you can bring glory to your father, which is in heaven. Now, come on here. Let's have this conversation. Now, when Jesus was entering Capernaum, now this is Jesus' headquarters, right? There came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick with palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. So Jesus said, I'm going to go over there face to face and I'm going to I'm going to encounter him face to face and I'm going to heal him. Now, look, now most people would have said, perfect, I won. Come on, Jesus, come to my house. I need you to come. I need you to be there in person to come and touch my servant. That's awesome. That most people, that's the end of the conversation. Now we're walking, we're walking with the Lord and that's it. We got what we wanted, right? But this centurion, he began to say something else. He said, wait, hold up, hold up. I know as a centurion, I don't have to go everywhere for things to get done. And I don't have to be everywhere for something to happen. And this is something that the centurion began to realize about Jesus. He said, wait, I know you carry a greater level of authority. Look at this. So the centurion answers him when he says, I will come. I will be there in person. He starts to kind of say things to say, I don't need you there in person. Look at this. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. So he's basically saying, you got all this authority. And, and I know he feels the conviction, right? Because when we're in the presence of Jesus, we feel the conviction of the Lord. We know what we haven't done right because you feel the conviction. It rolls right into those holes that you need to fill. It rolls right into those areas of your thought process that you need to fix. Whenever you're in the presence of God, God exposes your need for him. There's no way around it. And then he gives you grace, and then you move forward with the conversation or whatever it is that God has for you. Now, I want you to see something here. He said, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only. He said, right where we are, we don't have to go miles. We don't have to travel. We don't have to enlist camels. He said, you can say something right here from this location. How powerful is authority? Because remember, the servant needs power. But power only works in person when you have no authority oh i'm getting ready to say something oh oh, 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 i'm getting ready to say something today oh lord have mercy power really only works when watch this this is why jesus said i have to leave so y'all can receive the holy ghost and you will receive what power from on high but why he first said 
all power and authority, he said, all authority has been given unto me, now go. And before they started going, he said, oh, and because I have all authority, there's a promise coming from the Father who will give you power. So because Jesus sent them with authority, they now can receive power from on high. And the measure of power from on high was based on the authority that was on high. Thank you for those that are so and may the Lord bless you. Now, he's literally a raso. May the authority of God increase in your life. Now, he's literally, watch this, God bless you all. Thank you for joining. He's literally saying that the system of God is authority before power. OK, now the centurion says, I don't need you to come. Just say something, because when you when you speak your authority and look and my servant will be healed. He literally said, you don't need to come to my house. You matter of fact, don't come to my house because I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. He said, but if you have authority, this is why men and women of God, we are we are losing in the church. And dysfunction is strong in the church. Why? Because we don't have the humility to look for someone who has more authority than us. This is the problem in the church. Jesus literally said there are some that have five, some that have two, and some that have one. We are not equal when it comes to authority. We might be equal in our born-again experience. We might be equal because we all got saved we, uh, through grace, uh, by grace through faith. We might be equal in the sense that we're all sons and daughters of God. But we are not equal in rewards. We are not equal in responsibility. And we are not equal in authority. No, we're not. We're not even equal in gifts. Okay, the Bible says some can have many and some will only have one. Did you catch that revelation? And it's as the Holy Spirit wills. So God never loses his sovereignty to choose, his election to choose. He never loses any of those things. He just brings us into a greater position of favor. All right, so I want you to see this. Watch this, I'm gonna say something. Now, when you have authority, you can say something in your room. I don't have to go to the hospital room. Y'all not talking to me. There are many times that people bring up situations and you have to stop right there in that moment. And you have to say, Father, from this place, I petition this, that, the other. God, that they would be raised up. God, that there are some times that I did have to go to the hospital. And I did have to lay hands. Why? Because God wanted me to minister to the family members that were there. Did you catch it? It's not about, so 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 there are some, everything's going to be this, for the sake of ministry. When God is using you, it's for the sake of ministry. When you are a priest, you're going to be sold out. Listen, the purpose of being called a servant, a slave, a prisoner of Christ is all for the sake of ministry. That's not your devotion. You want to be there in devotion. You want to be there. But sometimes when you are serving the Lord, sometimes you don't want to do that. You know, sometimes you don't want to be a part of certain things. But because you love him, but because you know he's using you and, and him using you is going to bring glory to him, you end up doing it anyway. So now authority has the power to, to it has the, the, the ability to close the distance on power. So in other words, when you have authority, let me talk about your captain. The captain sits behind a desk and he deploys his power through authority. Why? He could say something on the scanner and he says, hey, we have an all points bulletin over here. We need to get over there. Guess what? Everybody who hears his voice in their walkie talkies, in their, their, their equipment, they're now all going because authority said, go over here. The captain doesn't need to get over there, but what he wants will be executed because of his authority. His power is now being displayed where he directed it. Are y'all listening to me? Some of y'all need authority. This is why y'all tired in ministry. This is why y'all drained in life. This is why y'all drain it. Because everything in your life requires a measure of authority. Are y'all listening to me? Now watch this. The centurion tells Jesus this. Now everybody's been pulling Jesus from house to house to house to house. Now I know what this feels like. I've been to Pakistan. I've been to Haiti. I've been to other countries. And you know what they do? They drag you from house to house. To, like you just a straight up energizer bunny. Okay. Everybody, they say, since we got you here. We need you to touch everything that belongs to us. It's like that scripture, Psalms 138 and 8, where it says the Lord will perfect all the things that concern me. 
they switch it and they say the Lord's going to touch everything that concerns me. So when you go over there, they got you going in everything. You laying hands on everyone. They got you in mama house, daddy house, cousin house. They got you in all the people, right? So Jesus at this time, they're dragging him all around. He's going in houses and sick is coming and they filling houses and he's healing whole cities, okay? Now imagine how tired he is because when the women touched the hem of his garment, power went out. I feel like preaching. I feel like preaching. Now, when your authority is right, your power will be strong, but your power can also be depleted. This is why Jesus, after every strong move, he went back into prayer. Y'all better catch that revelation, y'all. Some of y'all are celebrating the moments that you won. That service was powerful. That service was anointed. When you should be going back in the prayer closet and thanking God and asking to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. All right? Because we, we use power. We use everything depletes us. All right? Now, let us continue. For a for as a man under authority, look what he says, having soldiers under me. So he said, I have authority over me and I have authority over others. So he literally said authority. Now, I'm going to have this conversation, y'all. Well, 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 well. The devil doesn't want people to have leaders or coverings or different. Why? Because it's all about authority. It's all about you building your authority. You can't attack him from afar. You can't send missiles. You got to get on the land. Y'all not talking to me. Without authority, you got to send troops because you don't have satellites to paint the targets. Are y'all listening to me? You now have to get over there. And guess what? When you get over there, you don't know what to expect. What if the whole land is a trap? I know I'm talking real good. So the devil, he shorts your authority to get you on the field. You don't need to be on the field. As a matter of fact, the Bible says with the armor of God, when you put on the armor of God, the Bible says stand. It didn't say go over there. It said withstand, stand, and stand therefore. And then it tells you to pray. And when you're praying, you're releasing authority in over there in the battlefield. You're not even in the battlefield. You armored up, but you're not even there. Are y'all listening to what I'm telling you? Look at this. So he said, because I understand authority and I'm submitted to authority, I know how this thing works. He says, and I say to this man, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. Listen, when you have authority, you can command the enemy to back off, and you can command bad things to leave you. You can do self-deliverance. Or you can say, come. You can command resources to come to you. You could command helpers to come to you. The Bible says, pray to the Father, the Lord of all harvest, that he would send laborers. You can, you can bind and loose. Are y'all listening to me? Binding and loosing is about authority. It's not just about you being a believer. This is where people mess up because you bind it and loose it, but nothing is happening. It's because there's a problem in your authority somewhere. You're either abusing authority over others or you are not allowing an authority to be over you. Somebody say amen. Well, what did Jesus? And then he said, and to my servant, I say, do this. And he does it. And, and then he's, then Jesus heard everything and he marveled. And the Bible said to them that followed, verily I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith. No, not in Israel. Jesus is almost 30, 32, almost 33 years old. And he's been seeing a lot. He's been hearing from the father. He's been seeing what the father wanted to do. And he realizes he said, the people are here, but they have no authority. As a matter of fact, let me show y'all something. I'm, I'm going to get, we're going to get, we're going to get all the way up in here. Let's get up in here. Let's get on up in here. Yeah, let's, let's have this conversation. All right, we need to have this conversation. Now, I want y'all to see something here. Jesus was traveling. 
Jesus was traveling. All right. And these people kept questioning where he got his authority. And look, it says, and when they came again to Jerusalem and he was walking in the temple, there came the chief priest, the scribes, the elders, and said unto him, by what authority do you do these things? Who gave you this, th this authority to do these things? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will ask you one question. You'll answer me. He said, the baptism of John, was it from heaven or was it from men? So he was basically saying, they were asking, why do you have authority to do what you're doing? Right? And Jesus literally tells them, Jesus literally tells them, I'm not going to tell you how I'm doing these things. He said, because... Because you guys, watch this. Here's another one, Matthew 7, 29. He said, because you guys, back in the day, they would ask, who gave you the authority to do this? Now today, we don't even ask for authority. We get offended when people ask about authority. You want to know why? Because we don't understand authority. We, we don't understand authority. And if we don't understand it, that means obviously we're not operating in it. If we, When you understand authority, you know why somebody asks you, who is your covering or who is your, your leader or who is your pastor? We want to know who's discipling you. We want to know your speech. We want to know where you come from. We want to know your stock. We want to know. Listen, people get mad. They say, oh, tribalism isn't from God. No, God created tribes. God is the one who created the tribes of Israel. Sorry. It, tribes build a nation. Sorry. Now, tribes should work together. I'm against when tribes don't work together. I'm against when people separate and they create cliques. I'm against all of that. But tribes are actually necessary because you get a group of people who are good at doing one thing and they do that one thing. And that one thing they do is beneficial to all the other tribes that do just one thing. And it causes a level of humility to make people work together instead of a group of people who all say, we all do whatever. We can do whatever. I can do all things through Christ's strength. Yeah, yeah, you can. But the problem is the Holy Spirit may only give you one gift. The Holy Spirit may only give you one responsibility. So even though you can do all things to Christ, you, 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 you're a they're available to you, but that doesn't mean you have the permission or the authority to do it. OK, so back then they always ask who gave you the authority, which I think is a wonderful thing. For instance, I don't want nobody teaching my kid when I don't know what school or college they went to to teach my kid. Where did you get your master's? Where did you get your batch? Come on, guys. Like you just going to let somebody walk off the street and be like, well, I'm, I'm here. I'm going to be a, I'm going to be the teacher of history. Well, what do you know about history? I don't know, but I just feel like teaching. We do this in the church, and it's so silly. Look at this. Jesus, even at that time, many people weren't moving in authority. That's why Jesus marveled, because the Bible says he taught. Look at this. Jesus taught on, he taught on how to build your house, building a firm foundation. And then, and it came to pass when Jesus ended the sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught as he taught as one having authority and not as the scribes. I wonder how the scribes were teaching. I even have a question today on how people are teaching. I believe it's the same thing that we had back then. I believe the same time that Jesus was in is the same stuff we deal with now. We have a lot of commentary based teaching. We're going based off of what so-and-so said and what book they wrote and what so-and-so said. What, what, but at the end of the day, does what they like, okay, let me give y'all an example. We have a popular teaching that I believe is a total heresy. Okay. And it's, it's confusing prophets. It's messing up the prophets. It's tr it's making the prophets build a level of resistance and even levels of resentment for the church. This teaching says that all prophets are rejected by the church. And they use the Old Testament model. They don't use the New Testament church model. They use the Old Testament and they use the Jesus in between model. They don't use the early church model, which shows a different level of acceptance for prophets. 
They use Old Testament models. They use how all the prophets were killed by the people of God. They use Jesus, a prophet with no honor in his own hometown. But they don't use the Agabuses. They don't use the Antioch where the prophets and the teachers were gathered together. They were praying and fasting together in the church and they were ministering to the Holy Spirit and pleasing him. They don't use that model. They don't use that model, but but for some reason now every prophet that ever comes into the church now they have to build an immunity to rejection and so now the devil has them on the corner and instead of coming into the church what they do they run from the church and in most cases they start attacking and resisting the church they develop an autoimmune disease yes they do yes they do they start attacking what they are a part of are y'all listening to me? I know I'm talking real good. Ain't nobody commenting on here. I know I'm talking really, really good. Are you guys with me? All right. Hallelujah. Now, look at this. This centurion said, Jesus tells him, I have found no great faith in all Israel. I have not found it. And it's true. He's been teaching as one who has authority and not as the scribes. He's been moving through, doing what he needs to do. And the centurion says, watch this. He says what he says. And Jesus says, and I say unto you that, that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the, of the kingdom, watch this shall be cast out into outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He's talking about Israel. Look at this. And Jesus said unto the centurion, go thy way. And as thou hast believed, so be it unto thee. And his servant was healed the same hour. Now watch this. Authority works the moment the statement or declaration is issued. Authority makes things happen right. Listen, man, I've cast. Listen, listen, let me explain something. You can, there's, okay, so when you're moving in healing, you're moving in prophecy, and you're moving in uh, deliverance. There are different ways you can do it, okay? You can move in these things by faith, okay? And by faith means God really didn't tell you to do it. Somebody brought somebody to you, and so now you got to move by faith. Like you believe that God's going to speak or you believe God's going to deliver or you believe God's going to heal. Okay. Number two, you can either move by in, in authority. Okay. In authority. Okay. Now, if you're moving in authority, that's different because now when you step up, you've already been given permission to do it. God has already told you what he's going to do for the day. I'm going to heal today. I'm going to deliver today. I'm going to do this right. You already have the instruction. You already have the permission. So when you step up, when they bring that person to you, you already have bold confidence. You don't even need to pray because you already heard. Why Why you need to pray? You need to pray. You just need to take care of business, right? You hear the word and you do it. That's it. You don't need to. So you they bring them to you. Boom. You get right into it, right? That's because. You moving in, in authority. But then there's another, there's so many levels. Then there's the anointing of it. Now, the anointing of it is God just tells you how to do it, right? You know, he'll say, hey, this one's going to come. You're going to have to spit on the clay and wipe it on his eyes. Please, no Michael Todd stuff anymore. That was just horrific. You, we know the Lord. We know that teaching was based on faith. That had no authority. It has no anointing. We know that was just, and the faith didn't really work because it was a backlash. But the point is, God told Jesus, spit in the clay. God told Jesus, uh, tell this guy to, to, to go and get washed by the priest. God said, you know, so there's different ways that God can tell you on how to get a person delivered or how to get a person healed or how, what type of prophetic word to release. And that's with the anointing. But then you can also have, you can also have guys um, where you're doing it by the glory of God. And when the glory of God is moving, that means you, that's a high level of authority. And that that is where now no one really, God is touching you, but you don't have to have person-to-person -person interaction. All right? You don't have to have tangible person interaction, but you are having interaction with his person. But you're not having tangible where someone lays hands on you and stuff like that. The glory of God, all right, the Bible says, uh, that no flesh shall glory in his sight. So the glory of God is is not dependent upon flesh. The anointing uh, can be 
carried about by flesh, but it's not the 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 uh, the glory is not dependent upon flesh. Okay. All right. So let's get into let's get into our teaching now. I didn't said enough. Okay. And I didn't cover that. I covered 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 that. Okay. So the word spiritual authority is actually God's decision. Um, God is the one who gives us um, the authority. He is the one who chooses how it works. All believers are given a general authority over demons. Because you guys are seated in heavenly places, you're given general authority over healing, uh, over sickness, demons, and over sin. You guys have power to execute and deal with those issues. The Bible even says when people confess their faults to one another, they may be healed, okay? There's a healing that happens even in the sin area that the believer, there's things that you operate in, okay, from this general authority that you get from God. However, it is quite obvious that most believers are unable to exercise authority over sickness, death, or even the weather, OK, this sort of authority is given as the Holy Spirit wills to those who have the gifts or healing or of miracles. OK, authority over major principalities and power. It actually has to be exercised by the church as a whole. This is where the Bible talks about one could take a thousand, two could take ten thousand. That's dealing with authority. That's not really dealing with power. That's dealing with authority. It's authority coming together. As a matter of fact, the Bible even says where two or three are gathered together in my name. That's dealing with authority. The authority to deal with the with a brother or sister who refuses to repent. That you bring them before the brother. They don't answer. You bring another one. They don't answer. You bring them to the church. They don't answer. Then the Bible says they are unbeliever because they are resisting authority. I want to talk to you guys. Some, when people resist authority, God stands with the people of authority. He doesn't stand with the people outside saying, y'all didn't love me. Y'all didn't. No, 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 no. You're acting like an unbeliever because you refuse to be corrected. You refuse to repent. You refuse to change. You refuse to obey the Bible. So you chose to be uh, to be put out as an unbeliever and a tax collector. And, and, and what happens for unbelievers? Unbelievers don't have the same favor as believers. Sorry. OK, and as a matter of fact, when you act as an unbeliever, you now cause a problem in every other relationship that you are connected to because you're acting as an unbeliever. All right. And that's all about authority. The Bible says even where two or three are gathered together and they ask anything on the earth, it shall be done for them. That's based on authority. So the church as a whole has power to remove principalities, powers, and even execute church discipline as a judgment, okay, when we're all together in authority, okay? This is why the enemy likes to attack, you know, uh, churches and unity of churches because if he can attack the authority, then the then the church can't execute judgment. The church can't execute discipline. And so now you got people running wild in the church because the church didn't come together to execute the same discipline. The Bible says we ought to have the same speech, the same mind, and the same judgment. Why? Because that's the proper executing of authority. Okay? Authority is not just for demons and devils. Authority is for executing church judgment. And that means when you execute church discipline, Paul told them, turn that brother over to say it took the whole church to do it. The whole church had to get behind it. the whole church. Can you imagine two or three people saying, no, I don't think so. They're going to be okay. Let's pray for them. We got to pray. No, no, no. The Bible said, turn them over. We already prayed for them. They didn't listen. We already fasted for them. They didn't listen. You need to release that thing. And trust that God going to do it another way. Somebody say amen. You got to trust that God going to do it another way. See, some of y'all are enabling people to be more demonic because you calling them, I'm just checking on you. No, ain't no just checking on you. If, if the 70 walked off, you have to let them walk. Jesus didn't say, hey, y'all better go check on them. I think they might be offended. No, Jesus turned around and said, hey, are y'all offended too? Y'all going to walk off too? No, you have to stand in your position of church discipline or your authority is trash. The devil knows your authority is trash because you're too afraid to execute discipline. People need to be chastened by the Lord. People need to be disciplined so they will be partakers of his holiness. The problem is people are no longer holy anymore because you scared to execute church discipline.
discipline. Why? Because you might got some stuff going on in your life and you scared. The first thing you think is, what's going to happen if it happened to me? Well, you shouldn't think like that if you're living right. That means you need to fix some stuff. Come on here. I know I'm talking real good. Hallelujah. Now, with that being said, it takes the whole church in some instances to deal with what's over the city, to deal with what's in the church. The Bible says judgment begins in the house of the Lord. Well, God has me on this thing. Judgment begins in the house of the Lord. So first in the house of the Lord, it, it deals with us. But then it moves outside it moves outside to around the church. So we cannot do anything over the city until we first do what's within the church. The Bible says we don't have the authority to judge those or without. God does that. So we don't judge the world. Yet that's funny. We judge in the world. We upset with what the world is doing. No, the world going to do what the world going to do. Did you catch it? The question is. It, does God have a right to judge me? The Bible says the spiritual man judges all things and is judged by nobody. Did you catch that? First Corinthians chapter two. So when you are judging yourself, when the church is judging itself, judgment begins where? In the government, in your state, in the people throwing these bills out. No, the judgment begins with us and that it, it's all about authority. I promise you it's all about authority because when you're rightly judged, now when you step on the field, who going to stop you? When you judge yourself, Father, forgive me, cleanse me, purify me. When you confess, when you repent fast, when you get God, get this thing. When you start hating it the way God hated it. When you start dealing with yourself and your stuff the way God feel about it. Who going to stop you? Now you see why Satan attacks those areas. Are y'all listening to me? Ooh, Lord have mercy. All right, here we go. Now, how can a believer gain the authority to bind and loose, to heal, to deliver, to combat uh, territorial spirits, and how to overcome the powers and principalities in heavenly realms? Well, number one, you got you to gotta desire it. L l listen, let's go here. Let's go here. Let me go here. There's no way around it, guys. There's no way around it. There's no way around it. The enemy has been attacking the very thing that gives you power. Gives you power. L let's do it here. But he gives more grace. Who? God. Wherefore, he said, God resists the proud, but gives what? Grace to the humble. What is humble about? What is humility about? Humility is about submission, but it's for the purpose of authority. You don't submit just to people. You submit to the authority of people. Lord have mercy. This is like me telling my older daughter to submit to my younger daughter. There's going to be problems there. You want to know why there's going to be problems there? Because my younger daughter doesn't have as much authority, wisdom, and understanding as my older daughter. My younger daughter can't run the house. Even though she tries to control the house, she doesn't, she can't run the house. She can't manage the house. My older daughter can manage. So it makes it right for me to tell my younger children to listen to their older sisters, to submit to the authority. Are y'all listening to what I'm telling you? Right? Now watch this. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. And then it says, resist the devil. See, now you see, this is how authority works. Why does God say submit to him? We're already in him. He's already in us. But why does it say submit? We already connected. It's because it's for the sake of authority, the ability to receive and the ability to exercise authority. Now, I want you to put this in the chat room. Exousia. Well, you were conceived in God. Now watch it. When you submit to God and you resist the devil, you give the devil a track suit. He has to run from you. But let me show you something. Go to John chapter 1 verse 12. John chapter 1 verse 12. This is really good. I know this is some good meaty stuff. Okay. You got to understand this. You were born to have authority. Look at this. But as many as received him, he gave them, he gave them power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now, this word power, there's also the word called exousia. Now, that's what here it is right here. The word exousia. 
All right, you probably heard of it. It means it is permissible and it is allowed. The word exousia literally means to move about without limits. So we have the right as sons and daughters of God to access all kinds of things. This is why you don't need a training class on the prophetic to be prophetic. The Bible says that the spirit would fall on all flesh and the sons and daughters would prophesy. So because of exousia, you have the right to move about in the prophetic. You have the right to move about in deliverance, which is the children's, the right exousia, the children's, the sons, bread, the daughter's bread. Did you catch it? You have the right to move about with healing. Did, you, you, are y'all listening to me? Without limits. But in order to move in that great power, you have the permission. But in order to move in that great power, to release and execute that, you have to have to manage your privileges well. Let me give you an example. We have power to drive. But how do you get that power to drive? You got to pass the test. You got to be found responsible. Okay. To manage, okay, you have to be responsible to manage what? Your privileges. Your privileges. Driving is a privilege. Look at this. The word exousia means permission, authority, right, liberty, power to do something. Uh-oh, watch this. Exousia, it denies the presence of hindrance. So when you're saying, man, I feel hindered, I feel bound, it is an authority issue. And this is why I've been telling people, you know, folks, they'll be like, oh, you're, they'll, they'll call your ministry controlling. They'll call you Jezebelic. They'll call, when you start teaching on authority and the only response to authority is submission, folks is going to call you Jezebelic. There's no way around it. But the fact of the matter is when people learn the truth about scripture and the truth about Greek words, the intent that it was written in and the truth about the power that comes from you doing something a certain way and you being in line with God. We talk so much about alignment with God, but most people are in rebellion to God because they don't submit to the weightier matters. Well, I tithe and I attend church and I love the Lord. I read my Bible. I play worship music all day long and and I have a couple of devotionals and I and I, you know, I do the best I can for Jesus and my family. And no, 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 no. You somebody say it's time to go deeper. Somebody say there's weightier matters. There's weightier matters like one of them is being merciful. Another one is is righteousness. A one another one is being just. OK, another one. There's so many other matters. Love is a weighty matter. OK, how you love people. OK, how you love people who hurt you, how you love. Come on, guys. It's, it's, there's weightier matters. OK, now this means the d denies the presence of a hindrance. So when you're moving in, when you're moving in authority, it removes hindrances. Remember, it's the ability to move about without limits. So I stay in submission to have authority. Are y'all listening to what I'm telling you? Lord have mercy. Can you imagine a cop saying, I ain't listening to the captain. I'm not listening to the sergeant. I'm doing whatever I want. And now that's why we got stuff on the news. Police brutality usually happens from cops who aren't submitted to the truth of authority. We had that in the church. As a matter of fact, we have the term vigilante. We love the Batmans. We love the Flashes. We love, we love, you know, the superheroes who put on the cape and the mask and the cowls to cover their identity. Why do you need to cover your identity? Why? Because you are a vigilante. You are operating outside of the law, trying to create what the you're trying to produce what the law is supposed to produce without submitting to the law. Did you catch it? You're not submitted to authority, but you're trying to produce results that the law should produce, but you're trying to do it your own way. That's a vigilante. That means you have to hide your identity. And do you know when you operate as a vigilante, do you know you never really find out who you are? Your identity will always be concealed because God doesn't want you to operate as a vigilante. He wants you to operate in the truest form of your identity, but that doesn't happen without you submitting to authority. 
Are y'all listening to me? Look at this. All right. Now, when you put Exesti and Exousia together, which they're both working together, it and you combine the words, it means two ideas, the right and the might. It means you have the right and you have the might. All right. Are y'all listening? All right. Now, it takes authority to be a parent, a spiritual authority in the home. It takes authority to be a pastor or a spiritual leader in the place of service and over the powers in those regions. It takes authority to counsel people, authority over indwelling demons and spiritual afflictions to speak the word and power into a human's life. It takes authority for the ministry of healing. It requires authority over sickness and death. It takes authority to be married. Come on here. For wives, it takes authority. You have to submit to the authority of your husband. And husband, it takes authority to love your wife. Amen. Even when they're not submitting or things ain't working. And wives, it takes authority to submit to your husbands, even though they be messing up and making wrong decisions. It takes authority. Come on here. To do the work of the Lord. The Lord gives authority to his servants and to each their work. And how do we grow? How do we strengthen ourselves in this authority? I got nine minutes. Number one, by praying in unity. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 through 20. The Bible says when we all can agree on the same thing, where two or three can agree, then the Bible says when you pray, you shall have it. How's the next level that we grow in authority? By using the word of God against the devil. You know, some of us don't even know how to use scriptures against the devil. It is written. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit will remind you of the things that Jesus spoke. Jesus is the word of God. Read the word of God. Get what Jesus said. Get what God said. And the Holy Spirit will remind you. He'll put it in the storage, your USB storage. Okay. Number three, you got to stand on the promises of God. The promises of God were made from the declarations of authority from God. Like the centurion. The centurion said, just speak it. Now, what God speaks over our lives becomes the promises for our lives. Number four, pray for things that are clearly revealed in God's will. Stop praying against the will of God. Your authority is being short-circuited when you want God to give you what you want. Listen, actually, a matter of fact, one of the judgments of God on the people of God is actually giving you what you want. They prayed for quail. They ate quail. And while the quail was down in the belly, they all died. All right. All right. Another thing that increases authority is persistent prayer. Praying to the, the, the son, praying to the father, praying the will of God, praying consistently, praying without ceasing increases prayer and fasting. Sometimes you need to fast. Why? Because we live this life. We, number six, we live this life. And when we are in this life, there are things that make us want to walk in unbelief. The man said, heal my son. He said, he said, I believe help thou my unbelief. So you need to pray and fast. As a matter of fact, that's the short circuit of power in casting out devils. They couldn't cast out the devil because they had a problem with authority. And the reason why they had a problem with authority was because they were not praying and fasting. Okay. A lot of people that are, that are acting up with leaders and stuff like that. I'm telling you, they're not really authentically praying and fasting. Number seven, discernment. Number seven, you need to build spiritual discernment. I'm not talking about the discerning of spirits. The level of discernment you have, watch this. You can't have authority that you don't understand. Discernment is the ability to understand things clearly. So when you don't have the ability to understand authority, how do you think you're going to get more authority? It's not going to happen, okay? Number eight, innocence and purity of heart. The more innocent, the Bible says, be innocent to that which is evil and wise to that which is good. You have to walk in a level of innocence and purity, and that increases your authority. Sometimes you got to give a deaf ear to foolishness. Did you catch it? You got to give a deaf ear to gossip. That keeps you pure, okay? I already talked about authority from being born again. We have the authority exousias on the screen. Um, also, the right doctrine, the right doctrine, 
gives you more and more authority. Okay, they were astonished at Jesus's doctrine and how he taught with authority, not as the scribes. When you have the right doctrine, you're going to have big measures of authority. Okay, faith, increasing in faith, that helps your authority. Okay, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God that will increase your authority, fearlessness and boldness. All right, these are what. You have to do, you have to be this way to continue to receive more and more authority to exercise more and more authority. Testifying to Jesus. I tell people all the time, if you share the gospel, you will tread over serpents and scorpions. That is a statement of authority, okay? That's a statement of authority. The blood of Jesus, the same thing, living and doing. It, it. When you're interceding, you need to be interceding what the blood is interceding, okay? You can't just say what you want, you know? And the name, the testifying of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, all of those are connected to building your authority. Understanding the indwelling of Christ's spirit on the inside of you. That means being conscious and being conscious of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. That increases your authority. Putting on the whole arm of God increases your authority. Understanding the wiles of the devil. Be not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. That increases. Now, I know I'm going through this really fast because I'm trying to get out of here. I got four more minutes. Amen. I got a ton of scriptures. I could send y'all the notes or whatever. Y'all can inbox me, whatever. Now, use his spiritual weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down a stronghold. This is what you need to know how to manage your mind. Managing your mind and using your spiritual weapons to, con to govern your mind. That's going to help you um, to have more authority. Romans 12, 21, the Bible says, overcome evil with good. That, ex that increases your authority. Standing in peace that Christ gives you, that increases your authority. That increases your authority. All right? Hold on one second. All right? What's another one? Um, binding the strong man. All right, binding a strong man, breaking down a strong man. Uh, that's a whole nother teaching. That's more of a deliverance thing. The word of command, okay? Understanding the words of command, understanding authoritative words and releasing those authoritative words, that's going to be a blessing to you. Uh, also, the anointing with oil. Uh, anointing, with, anointing with oil and exercising authority through the prayer of faith. Um, knowing your identity in Christ. All of Ephesians. Read, go read all of Ephesians and you'll get into that. Uh, understanding the nature of faith and authority working together. Faith and authority works together. Um, the blood and authority. that You can, you can co-mingle those together. Um, all right? And there's so many other things. Humble service uh, increases your authority. Um, if you want to be great, the, he who is great must become a servant of all. So that increases your authority, provide people with a service, provide people with a ministry, create something where you're helping people. Okay. That, that raises your authority, uh, resisting the devil. I just said that submit to God, resist the devil that builds your authority. Okay. Um, sharing in the trials with Jesus. Um, I want, this is one of the biggest areas. And, and I think we, we fail in this area because. We make it about us and not about him. When things go wrong in your life, when was the last time you just said, well, Jesus went through this. No servant is greater than his master. So then I'm going to go through it. Or when was the last time you went through something and you said, Lord, now, oh, now I understand what you went through. One of the biggest things that increases authority is um, allowing ourselves to relate to the Lord. Allowing ourselves to relate to the Lord. Okay. Here's another thing that increases your, um, your authority, being faithful in service, being faithful in service. The Bible says that Moses was faithful in all of God's house. That's why he got face-to-face -face encounters. Miriam and Aaron didn't get face-to-face because -face they weren't that faithful. You know, they found other reasons to, they were faithful to other things more than they were faithful to the house of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. By abiding in the cross and in redemption. Okay. That's big for authority. Accepting the grace of the Lord in our weaknesses. Where the Bible says his strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. You could build a lot of authority there by recognizing that if you can be 
If you can trust the Lord to make you strong when you're weak, it, it builds the level of authority. You can feel the authority pulsating because the Bible says that strength is made perfect in your weakness. Okay? Being strengthened by the Holy Spirit in your inner man. Um, make sure you're walking in Christian character, in, in deep levels of Christian character, in the depths of Christian character. That will That's going to help you. Uh, persistent long-term obedience. Okay? Sometimes when you're being disobedient, you're breaking into your authority. You can break into your authority by being disobedient. And, I, and this generation, I don't know why, but a lot of people just believe that God can ask them to do stuff. And, and when they tell me this, I cringe. They usually say, well, I, I, the Lord told me to do this. And I was like, I ain't doing it. Like, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to. That's not something I want to do. Are you kidding me? Like, I mean, people really say that. Like, are you kidding me? All right. And then, <laughs> and then one of the normal ways that you understand is being baptized uh in the holy spirit amen being baptized in the holy spirit all right may the lord bless you guys may the lord keep you guys i thank you for joining me if this message was a blessing to you you know what you can do you can follow us online you can share this message you can tag it you can be a blessing or you can sow a seed may god bless you i pray you're growing in your authority if you need the notes make sure you request those notes amen um if you need them amen I love you guys and may God bless you in Jesus name. Share, 